Welcome to the unveiling of untold history documentaries, mastering classes in business management, and sparking insights through money dialogues. This is Jeff Kafka TV, where you discover untold business histories, master the art of management, and ignite money conversations that matter. If you are Mark Zuckerberg, the owner of the biggest tech companies, how much would your monthly salary be? Okay, maybe, 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 maybe a lot, a lot of dollars in millions. Uh, what if you're the owner of one of the biggest companies locally here in Kenya? You, the CEO, founder, owner, how much would your salary be? You know, you're thinking a lot, you know, you'd make it train in your bank account. But I don't know whether this is a surprise to you or this is information that you already know, but Mark Zuckerberg, the founder and CEO of Meta, the company that owns Facebook, earns $1 as his base salary every month. It's approximately 150 shillings every month. And so does Larry Page and the other co-founder of Google. They paid a dollar every month. You might think that is modesty. You might think you're doing that for the show or for people like me to talk about it on a podcast. But no, they are doing it because as big business owners, that was that is one of the best ways to avoid paying taxes. Let me explain. We are still on the topic of tax avoidance. We've looked at how you as an individual earning your employment income can avoid paying taxes. And it doesn't mean that you're being bad. No. It doesn't mean that you're not paying your fair share of it. Because as we looked earlier, we realized that you cannot really avoid paying taxes. Because even people who do not have sources of income still pay indirect taxes. But... What if you're a big business owner? What if um, you've cracked the code of business and you're now you know, transacting in the millions every day or even every month? And, you know, when, when you do that, that means uh, you, you're on the radar of KRA. The CEO bank statements, they're able to follow uh, your marketing on, on, on social media. They, they're able to know you, you know, and of course they expect a big chunk uh, of taxes from you. But how do you still avoid paying all those taxes? And before you say it is immoral, like for big businesses to avoid paying taxes, uh, think of it this way. Does an economy grow because people are able to pay more taxes or because people are able to spend more money. And as you're thinking, I'll give you my opinion. When big business owners pay little taxes, they do not use the money for personal enjoyment or for holiday because if they spend the money again on those things, I mean, there'll still be uh, indirect taxes on them. Instead, they reinvest the money. They make sure that uh, the product line is increased. They hire more people to make sure that more people have more disposable incomes. Therefore, there's more spending, and more spending means the growth of the economy. So, if you're a big business owner, I have three simple tips for you that you can use to avoid paying taxes. They might look like hacks, they might look like illegal. But as long as they are classified as tax avoidance, then by all means, try them. And the first one is the reason why Mark Zuckerberg pays himself a dollar every month. So, but may I'll go on and advise you not to pay yourself. I find it um, interesting that the moment you become a business owner, the first thing you want to do is draw a big salary. 
which is advisable. You told, you know, when you start a business, pay yourself first. And yeah, okay, pay yourself first. But now we're talking about big business owners. You're moving millions uh, in your company. You have company vehicles. You have all that. But I'm advising you not to pay yourself. Uh, how do you do it? How does Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Page, and the others who pay themselves a dollar every month do it? If you have to pay yourself in Kenya, make sure you earn below 24,000 shillings. This way, remember the tax band, the graduated scale has 10% for amounts uh, from 24,000. So it means if you earn 24,000 shillings, the taxman will tax you 10%, which is 2,400, but the taxman is also required by law to give you a tax relief of 2,400, meaning, in essence, you are paying zero taxes. So you do not pay yourself or and below 24,000 shillings every month. And that way, the taxman will be able to only get uh, zero from your income. Then the next question is, how do you survive? And that is the second option here, survive or not. Now, I don't know whether you've noticed that all these big business owners, they become big business owners or they become multimillionaires because of their asset base. And one big component of their assets is the stock or a part of that company that is the shares. So that in most cases, instead of being paid in cash, they are paid in stock. So when you're paid in stock, it means that you own 10%, 20%, 15%, or even big companies like uh, Facebook owning 2.5% means you own a lot of stock in that company. Stock is good collateral for a loan. So you go to any bank, uh, you are uh, a big business owner, you own stock, you own shares, you own assets that are associated with that business. So meaning that they can give you a loan of whatever amount you want uh, based on that stock. Now, this loan has two or more benefits if you look at it. One way is that now you can be able to do your personal things with that loan. Pay school fees or the things that people get a salary to do. <laughs> You know, pay school fees, uh, build a house, uh, take care of emergencies like uh, medical, etc. So when you have taken, you've been paid in stock, then you've taken that stock for bank and taken it as collateral, then that loan you can be able to use it uh, for your personal needs, for your personal survival. That's what they do, survive on the loans. The second thing is when you get this loan, as cash inflow from the bank and all that. Other than the normal loan charges, no, loans are not taxed. And the same way, this loan will attract an interest. But interest for your organization is tax deductible. Remember, when we are making financial statements, uh, after you've calculated the gross sales, uh, the, the cost of sales, the gross profit, the administration expenses. We have what you call earnings before interest and taxes. So this is the total profit after deducting all other company expenses, but you have not deducted interest, you have not deducted taxes. Then you are allowed to deduct the interest. After you deduct the interest, now you have earnings before taxes. Then, so meaning you deduct taxes after you have deducted the interest. So meaning the interest you've taken on the loan to be able to survive will also allow your organization to pay less taxes because it will be deducted before you're taxed. And after you're taxed, 
now that is what you can distribute to your shareholders because we call that earnings attributable to the equity holders or the shareholders. So do not pay yourself. You ask yourself, how will I survive? I say survive on loans. Uh, the stock, the assets uh, of the big business that you own, use it as collateral. Uh, use that amount to live on. Then whatever interest that you charge by the bank, you're allowed to deduct it from your earnings before taxes. So the taxes will be less or rather will be lowered by the amount of the interest that you pay. And the third way is invest in capital deductible expenditure. Uh, when we first talked about taxation and the way tax is calculated, we talked about allowable and disallowable expenses. And one of the disallowable expenses we talked about is depreciation. We know uh, that depreciation is a charge uh, on the use of the wear and tear of an item. That is an asset, vehicles, buildings, uh, you know, all those assets that you have. But now you as an investor, you are a big business owner, then you have to take, uh, you have to take a lot of uh, advantage on what now the KRA people call capital deductions. So when you invest in a building, then you, the accountant should know, uh, based on the region, based on the value, how much is deductible on that capital expenditure from your profits. If you invest in vehicles, the same way. If you invest in furniture, the same thing. If you invest in, you know, if you are a farmer and you invest in farmhouse, the same thing. So these deductions will come here. Before the interest and taxes, all the capital deductions. If this is your gross profit, all the capital deductions will reduce your profit. And remember, the taxman will tax on the profit. So as a corporate, as a big business owner, three ways to save on your taxes, three ways not to pay a lot of taxes, three legal ways to avoid taxes. Do not pay yourself, survive on loans, invest on capital deductions. For more questions, please comment below with your views. Uh, for more clarifications, also comment with your email. I'll be able to reply to you. And for any other thing, kindly do not uh, forget to subscribe on this channel, share, and you'll be the first one to be notified on every new video. For now, this is it. This is Jeff Kafka TV.